This uh, next piece comes from the moment when um, the church finally decided that they would ordain women. And it's called Star at Its Rising. 1992, July. Again, we're told, not yet. We remain women in waiting. Rob can't find work. The parish teams an uneasy mix of grating souls. Remembrance Day. I stand outside church house. Westminster drizzle seals in cold. The speeches are made. I hear how the church, like a village oak, stands trembling under the axe. I am that axe. Me and all the would-be women priests. In the early dark, I walk towards a TV crew. An interview I've agreed. And a man looms across my path, tall and cloaked. You witch, he hisses. Do you hear me, witch? You are a witch. I don't reply to my brother in Christ. I'm doing the maths as the vote comes in. Yes, the BBC reporter cheers. Not that I'm taking sides. On camera, I say, it's the way we see God, inclusive, God with us, fully human. I hug my magenta duffel coat against the rain. A cheer erupts, a firework blazes across the sky like a single star, epiphany. And so it goes on. Eventually I, I moved to a parish um, in Birmingham, but before that I was part of the very first service of women's ordination, which took place in 1994 in Bristol Cathedral. And because it was quite a momentous historical event, there was a group of us who were kind of designated to deal with the media. And um, I and my family did something like 50 interviews in the two weeks running up to the ordination. And we had people from all over the world come to see us. And the children were very young at the time. I by then had three children at that time. And, and was pregnant with the fourth, keeping up the tradition. And um, they, it was quite a wearing process for them, but it, also a very exciting one. And we finally came to this moment. It's called Veni Sancti Spiritus, which is Come Holy Spirit. The plump provost claps his hands. The words of the processional hymn reverberate as we wind down the aisle. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty. We are robed in white, embroidered souls, worn like sashes of beauty queens for the last time. Cameras flash, the service is a blur of music, light, and liturgy. At the moment of ordination, we stand in an ark. Is it therefore your will that they should be ordained priests? It is. The ascent is as loud as apocalypse. No one objects. We go forward one by one. Send down your Holy Spirit upon your servant Meg. At the exchange of peace, a standing ovation booms, the congregation erupting in euphoria of greeting. I see Lauren in her cream silk dress, fair hair escaping in wisps from a dark blue ribbon. Six years old and confident, she shakes hands with everyone in her path. That new priest is my mummy, she sells each one. Cameras flash like the birth of a universe.
The final sequence in the book deals with um, my time in Birmingham, which I, I was there in the parish for two years, and it was a fantastic little parish, and we did the most amazing work. Again, it was a very poor parish. Again, it was somewhere men didn't want to work, but we had a really amazing small community of people. It was uh, marred somewhat because for some reason I started to attract assaults and I was assaulted quite seriously three times in post over two years, one of them at knife point and one of them I sustained uh, quite a bad neck injury. The difficulty wasn't the physical assaults, wasn't the fact that um, there were heroin addicts on the patch who were looking for money, it was the reactions of my colleagues and the hierarchy who saw me as making the church vulnerable to bad publicity and eventually I was um, I retired with ill health but there was a certain amount of constructive dismissal and this poem comes not from stale bread and miracles but from my first collection and it's called how to rise again and I think it's it's quite a good way to end if I can if my eyes will just hold out this last little bit <laughs> Find dandelion clocks and count to twelve. Tie talismans of fresh sweet lavender beside your gate and on south facing doors. Grow tulip bulbs on every window sill and walk a moonlit beach at equinox. At Easter, bury chocolate, foil wrapped eggs like secret seeds on every scented room and cook a feast and laugh with those you love and open windows even in the rain you will not live forever but for now not wasting life on how to rise again thank you Thank you very much, Jen. I'm sure you did well to escape that bunch of patriarchs. Um, um, could we just thank all three poets again for an excellent evening's reading? Thank you. Thank you.